I'm John Wilkins, and welcome to Preserving African American Art in the Foothills. As a collector of African American art, I have found a lot of inspiration in a number of artists throughout the South, mainly within North Carolina. And in this exhibit, I'm going to show you some of the pieces that have inspired me as a collector. So let's get started. Here we have an artist from Raleigh, North Carolina by the name of Eric McRae. And in this piece called Peace and Quiet, which is one of two, he depicts his love of jazz. Oftentimes in um, African American art, we depict those pieces of our lives that we celebrate and love. And you'll see throughout the exhibit how African Americans depict their lives within their art. Continuing on, we have here Roderick Vines, which depicts African Americans and their athletic abilities, the runnings, the torch, going back to the days of the sprinters in Africa, celebrating the vitality and the youth of the African American male. That's a great depiction and is oftentimes displayed within African American art. But if we move further on, there are artists that depict a more genteel life, such as Sherlock and Blue Note, again a North Carolina artist from the Raleigh area. Look at the colors in the scenes. It's just in such a way that just grabs you and brings you into the art. Wonderful depiction of a gentleman with a guitar and a stove. I can relate to that growing up in my grandmother's house where she had an old stove and a guitar. Another piece that I'd like to show you is by Danny Broadway. Danny Broadway does a lot of wonderful scenes of, of landscapes. And look at the colors. It's serene, calming. That's the way he depicts art in his life. And most of his art depict this very serene uh, and type of environment. There are a number of artists that some would say African American artists have elevated to fine art. And those artists are such as um, Romare Bearden, which is a native of Charlotte, North Carolina, and William Tolliver. We do have a number of their pieces here, so let's take a look. Romare Bearden, from his series, Circle the Swine, in the Odyssey series, again has been elevated to the status of fine art as it is depicted for African American artists. Collected around the world, there are a number of pieces um, in my collection by Romare Bearden. As we move on, one of the, I find one of the better pieces in my collection are the ones that are fun, the ones that draw me in. And this is a piece, it's a panel out of a four piece series by Boyd Smith, purchased in Charlotte, North Carolina. He um, created these as part of his um, senior year assignment for graduation. He has now moved on to working on his masters um, out in the Midwest. But again, an emerging artist, when the panels are together, they tell a story uh, about um, progress, as this one is titled, Progress here. Wonderful artist depicting his life, the graduation, the knowledge to study, the steps uh, moving up. We have artists who, again, depict a lot of jazz scenes. This happens to be a um, New Orleans artist by the name of Michael Smartauto. And I have four panels of his, but all of them depict uh, a different jazz artist, a lot of movement, a lot of color that depicts the tones within jazz. Again, wonderful art. One of the pieces that I bought some years ago that really grabbed me is this piece by Gabrielle Nicosi, purchased in Charlotte, North Carolina at the McCall Center of Visual Arts. Nicosi had a very interesting um, life and career. She is from South Africa. This is a piece 
of the, depicting domestic violence, which she was a victim of. And it's called One Sunday Morning. I purchased this piece back in 2005. Uh, and looking at the subject matter, I thought it was a celebration in the church. And when I went to pick up the piece, it turned out to be a domestic violence. Since then, Nikosi, who has traveled around the world trying to escape the violence of her boyfriend, returned to South Africa and was eventually killed by him in a murder-suicide. So this has a special piece to me because it depicts exactly what she was trying to warn us against. If we move on, we have another piece here by Eric McRae. Eric McRae, again, is a artist, and he has done collages. Along the Romare Bearden theme, as we looked at Cirque of the Swine, he is represented broadly throughout this entire collection. But as you can see, this one is called Church Mother. It's one of his more popular pieces and one that he still talks to me about today as bought, wanting to borrow and, and, and so forth. But it depicts how he sees a church mother, that strong figure within your church, again, depicting African-American life. Again, we have another Romare Bearden, which is called Early Sunday Morning. Excuse me, it's called Early Carolina Morning. And again, from what we would consider a master artist within his own right. Moving on, I'd like to introduce you to another artist, a young emerging artist within um, Eastern North Carolina by the name of Richard Wilson. Here we have two etchings by Richard Wilson. Boy sitting with guitar and boy um, standing with guitar. Richard Wilson is one uh, award away from being classified as a master artist. Again, um, depicting his childhood. A lot of his scenes depicts youth with instruments or um, athletic gear, baseballs, softball, basketballs, and so forth. We also have here another piece, a contemporary art. Oftentimes, African American art depicts about something in your life. Church, sports, music, a struggle. But this was done by Eric McRae, and he said he wanted to kind to deviate just a little bit from the um, stereotypical depictions of African American art. So we see him entering into the abstract art. Wonderful, it tells a story, bright colors, vibrant. Here we have a piece by Juan Logan, untitled, it's a block print. Juan Logan is a resident of North Carolina and is really known for his large commercial installations. Let's also talk about three-dimensional art. Here I have three pieces purchased recently in Maryland by um, Karen Clark McAdoo. Three women. Three wonderful masks celebrating African American women. And as we know within the African heritage, it's especially with African American women, and in Africa itself, oftentimes it's about the hair. And as you can see, these three women have very distinct uh, hairstyles, very bold hairstyles. And again, it speaks to their place within their society. A great three-dimensional piece. Winnie Owens Hart is now retired, but she was a professor of ceramics at the historical Howard University within Washington, D.C. This piece has traveled with a number of museums across the country. It was on the road for about three years and I purchased it when it came into um, South Carolina. This piece represents her struggles with renting her home or her guest house to some individuals who turn out to actually be white supremacists or skinheads. And she said, regardless of how far we go in society, you can never forget the past. You don't dwell on it, but you don't forget it. So this piece represents the fact that she said you always have to be vigilant because you never know what someone is in their minds. Wonderful piece, one of the crown pieces. Another piece which I think is fun 
it's a three-dimensional, is by Woodrow Nash. And I always said, if I have a child, this would be the one. He doesn't speak and he doesn't require college funds. Untitled, this piece, I purchased from Woodrow Nash in um, Charlotte, North Carolina, in 2000, uh, 2011. It's a wonderful piece. He does a number of life-size pieces of, of Africans with all the headdress and the jewelry and so forth, but a wonderful depiction of a young African boy. I have another piece I would like to show you by David McDonald. David McDonald is a professor in Syracuse, New York, who is also a ceramicist, a good friend of Winnie Owens Hart. When you meet artists, oftentimes you meet their friends who are also artists, and you start collecting their work. This is a vessel that I purchased for, um, from David. When I saw his work on the internet, I reached out to him and Winnie and said, can I get a piece? And this arrived in the mail. Also, when we talk about African American art and art in general, there are always local artists who depict African American art or African American life through their, through their art and through their talent. This is a piece by Betty Johnston, a Polk County residence. And she created this piece as a commission for one of her clients. And the client never did come and pick it up. She had it for probably 20 or 30 years. And one day she came to dinner and she says, I think you need this piece. And so it showed up at my doorstep. Again, a wonderful depiction of an African prince is the subject matter. As we look around the room, there are a number of artists in the room, some depicted previously, such as Michael uh, Smarto. As you can see, this is one of his larger um, oils, uh, depicting a jazz um, saxophonist. Eric McRae, again, called Sweetie Pie. There, another piece. We also have uh, in this room another large panel, the larger one of the four series by um, Boyd Smith, and also another piece here, contemporary again, by Eric McRae. Again, moving away from depicting the typical African American life. But within this particular room, it's a nude created by Vincent Pimenti, a Barbados artist purchased in 1967 by Marion Hauser on a vacation with her husband to the island of Barbados. Same year I was born. And many years later, 40 plus years later, I meet Mrs. Hauser and befriend her and we had a great friendship. And she told me about this piece <laughs> There's funny stories that went with it, bringing it into the Port Authorities of New York and when she had it shipped in from the islands and she went to the Port Authorities with her, with her mother-in-law and her little Volkswagen and her white gloves to pick them up and the Port Authorities thought she was smuggling drugs and when they had her open the crate they saw this picture with this hindsight of this lady and they busted out in, la in laughter. This has been the response she has received all these years with this piece. She bequested this to me upon her death and it hangs proudly in my home because it means something to me and it also has a story. As a collector, stories that go along with your art, whether, whether you bought them or your relationship with the artist, are just as precious as the piece. Thank you for joining me today for viewing preserving African-American art in the foothills.